Hey guys, it's Kelly here again and welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another journal related video. Today I'll be going through my bullet, my reading journal for 2022 and I'll be showing you how I set up my reading journal for 2023. Without actually setting it up, I'll just go through the pages and show you what I have in store for tracking next year. But first, let's just look through my 2022 reading journal. I actually surprised myself quite a bit this year because I ended up reading a lot more than I uh, expected and a lot more than I uh, was initially my goal to read. <laughs> so let's just get started. This is my cover page. I went with a um, <laughs> retro scrap paper type of um, journal because I had a lot of printed out pictures that I wanted to use. Um, I have a very simple um, cover page with the year and then we get straight, get straight to it. So the first page is my index and my goal for 2022 was to read 2020, 2022. <laughs> my goal for 2022 was to read 22 books and I ended up achieving that. I ended up reading 32 books even which is 10 more than I was uh, aiming for. So naturally I did not have enough space. I left a bit more than I was uh, because I figured I'd probably maybe read more but I didn't end up leaving enough and um, yeah I also didn't end up writing a lot about each book and I'll get into that in a second. So my index is where I write down all of the books in order in which I read them and I give them a rating and this where it says page is supposed to be the page of the journal when I where I write something about the book itself, my opinion, my feelings uh, towards it and so on and so forth. As you can see I only did it for 12 books. So yeah I don't have the pages um, down below and I will explain why. On the next page we see my reading challenge which is going to continue on to next year. For each year I will have, see for 2022 I had 22 prompts, for 2023 I will have 23 prompts. So as you can see I did not end up completing all of them but I did pretty well. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 which is halfway through, right? Oh, it's even more than halfway through. So I'm really excited that I managed to con to uh, complete some of them, especially um, the book with more than 700 pages. I'm happy that I read from my shelf of shame, which are books that I've started at some point uh, over the years and just never ended up finishing for whatever reason. Didn't DNF them, I still wanted to finish them, but I just put them down and never picked them up. So I'm really glad that I managed to do that one. I also was really glad that I managed to read something right after I buy it because I usually just hoard books, I buy, buy, buy and I just never end up reading them or I end up listening to audiobooks that I don't have on my shelves and my um, books on my shelves end up being unread. So I am trying to focus more on the ones that I already have and an unwritten challenge for every year is that I want to buy less books than I read in a year. So that is what the next page over here is going to represent. These, I, as you can see, I ran out of space. Um, but yeah, these are the books that I read. These are the books that I bought. And this was my bookish wish list, which I, we will see next year. I probably won't have this. Um, because I tend to write down books that I want that at some point I either listen to them on audiobook or I decide that I don't want to read them anymore. So yeah, I ended up writing a few um, that I already uh, I had read and really liked that I wanted. So as I said, bookish wish list is probably gonna be scrapped for next year. But all in all, I did manage to get five of these that I wanted. No, four. No, five. Yeah, I managed to get five of the ones of the ten that I wanted. So I'm, I'm okay with this. I really want Sword of Kagan still. Um, yeah, so I'll be looking for it, but I will not be including it in my bookish wish list. For books bought, I bought 26 books and I read 32, so really happy about that. I am counting some that I got as gifts as well. So yeah, just really happy that I managed to read a lot more than buy. Uh, I hope this uh, continues on as a trend. 
for my 365 days of reading, I was tracking which days I read physical books, audiobooks, comic books, or ebooks. So as you can see, mostly I read um, via audiobook because I have a pretty hectic schedule, so audiobook is the way that I get through books. But I did manage to read a lot physically as well. As you can see, kind of uh, the first third, the second third, I'm sorry, of the year, the second quarter of the year, I managed to read a lot more than the rest. Uh, started off strong, kind of fell out in the first quarter, and I completely fell out from October to December. I did end up finishing two books, but I never ended up tracking when I would listen to them because they were both audiobooks. So yeah, I'm still keeping this as a tracker for next year uh, because I think it could look cool but uh, yeah it's pretty obvious that I'm mm, I don't read every day like there are little months where I don't read anything so um yeah although I was traveling here so I was reading from my ebook what I didn't manage to track it so yeah as I said can't always track what we read and when we read and how we read. On the next page, I have my averages of the year, my top six books of the year, and my books and pages of the year. So for this year, I ended up, I don't know why, but I kept coming, coming out with 33 books. And I think I made a mistake somewhere because I, I have them as 32 in my index, not 33, but you know, what can you do? It's just for fun, so <laughs> like, don't sue me. But yeah, around 32, 33 books uh, is that what I read this year and 10,000 pages, which is awesome because I don't tend to read big books, but I am happy that I managed to read this many pages. And I, as you can see, I was having a very good reading month in the beginning of the year and just kind of fell um, off at the end after the middle but I still managed to kind of keep um, the pages relatively normal so when I don't read a lot I guess I read around 500 600 pages and when I read a lot I read between a thousand and two thousand which is good um, I'm, I'm happy with it I have only one month when I didn't finish any books so that's good I almost finished one book but you know it ended up being in February and in the year the months that I was reading the least I managed to read at least one a month so I am still really happy about that um, for my averages my average book per month was 2.75 which is again really good um, as you can see it's not evenly distributed but 2.75 is really good I mean considering I used to be a type of person who would read one book a year if any, I'm really happy about that. Averages pay, average pages per month is also something I'm really happy about. 874 pages, give or take, is great because that means that the books that I'm picking up are a bit bigger. So that's good. <laughs> I, do, I am very intimidated by big books. So yeah, I, I count this as a win. My average rating was 3.64, which is not the greatest I have a tracker for the ratings as well it's not the greatest but I think it's mostly because I've read a lot of books that um, I wouldn't normally read so I the reason why it's a little lower I think is because I read a lot of books that are popular and everyone else was reading and raving about that just weren't for me for instance uh, dial a for aunties or convenience store woman or no longer human and just a bunch of books that I knew weren't my jam but still decided to give them a shot and those are the ones that kind of lowered my rating um, but overall I think it's a pretty good rating I do tend to give four stars to all the books I enjoy so it's always between 3.5 and 4 and only to my favorites do I give five stars so I think it's a pretty accurate rating my fastest read like this this fastest and slowest was really hard to determine so I ended up not actually doing what I initially set out to do so my fastest read was gallant because I listened to it as an audiobook and I listened to it um, in one day and at uh, 1.5 speed so it, it just I 
went through it really really fast so that's what i remember and that's why i put it down and my slowest read was against the fall of night because it's like 100 pages and it took me like nine ten months to finish because i kept putting it down so that's why i put that down here i'm not gonna track that next year because it's really hard to, tr to tell how fast you go through a book when you set it down and don't pick it up for months or when you go through books uh every day by audiobooks so yeah this is really i i can't track that so it makes no sense for me to track it next year my highest rated book i am not sure what i was going for when i added the highest rated and the lowest rated um i don't know what i was trying to track so i put in the highest rated book according to goodreads um, that I read this year, which is I, I'm glad my mom died, which had 4.59 as a rating and my rating for it was five stars, which is pretty accurate. I really enjoyed that book and the lowest rated book according to Goodreads was The Strange Library, which I really did not enjoy. It had a 3.39, I barely gave it two. So yeah, um, again, pretty accurate. My top six books of the year, I ended up, like you can see that I have them from six to going up to one. And just because these on the last row are all four stars, I actually have a few more that are five stars, but I, I don't consider them my top books. Um, for instance, I really loved Long Way Down. I gave it five stars, but I don't think it's going to be my top book just because I really enjoyed these three more um, in terms of originality and all different um, aspects. Uh, and even though I had some qualms with them and I didn't give them five stars, I still consider them more memorable for me for this year. So that's why I have like the top are five stars and the bottom are four stars. Just, it, just so you know, it doesn't mean just because it's a five star book doesn't mean it's gonna be one of my favorites of the year. So yeah, that's just something to keep in mind. As you can see, I have from six to first place, the ones that I enjoyed most were Wrong Place, Wrong Time, which is a thriller about a woman going, uh, waking up every day uh, at a different time and going backwards through her life and trying to stop a murder from happening. So this was a murder mystery with a sci-fi twist, which I really, really enjoyed. The Kind Worth Killing was a murder uh, mystery th thriller. Again, I read a lot of mystery th thrillers this year. This was a big surprise. I also read a lot of nonfiction, but I'll just I'll get into the genres later. So this is a mystery thriller. I really enjoyed this one. The Binding, I absolutely loved, even though the ending was a little weak, <laughs> but still, I just loved the book so much, and I I loved the audiobook in itself as well because the narrator did such amazing voices and such a great job. So this was an overall amazing experience as an audiobook. So that's why it's here. Um, sea of Rust really loved the ideas in it. Um, it is a post-apocalyptic sci-fi where you're following a bunch of robots after the human collapse and humans have died off. Um, in number second place, number second place, yeah, number two, in second place, I have I'm Glad My Mom Died, which I already said that I really, really enjoyed. And in first place, my favorite of the year is How High We Go in the Dark. Absolutely in love with it, bought it immediately after I read it, and I am going to be rereading it at some point, I'm pretty sure, because I just love it so much. Um, yeah, let's go on to the next pages, which are my genre and my ratings. So I really love making graphs. It's my job, actually, as a graphic designer. I make graphs. I make them digitally, of course, but I just really enjoy the aesthetic of them. So I have my genres uh, graph. I have my formats, my ratings, uh, my language, and my YA versus adults. So as you can see, for my genres, I divided the two main genre and subgenre because it's really hard to determine sometimes. So I actually ended up having a lot more genres based on what I typically read. So I have my sci-fi and fantasy that are just purely sci-fi and fantasy. I have fiction that has sci-fi elements or fantasy elements. I have non-magical fiction, which is absolutely regular fiction. Non-fiction myth and retellings, poetry, uh, and then I have mystery thrillers, post-apocalyptic or horror, superhero because I wanted to read a book that I never got to, <laughs> um, romance, 
classics, short stories, and other. Now, as you can see, I read mostly sci-fi, pure sci-fi. That is usually my main genre, are sci-fi and fantasy, usually sci-fi. I also read a lot of fiction with science and uh, with the science fiction and fantasy elements. So these ones don't surprise me at all. The ones that surprise me are the um, non-fiction where I read four books and the mystery th thriller, which I read almost as many as I read sci-fi. So that is really, oh, why did you stop working? Yeah, I guess I, I kicked. I kicked its outlet. So yeah, um, the mystery thriller is something that really surprised me this year. I And also the nonfiction. I don't think I've ever read nonfiction that wasn't connected to my studies or anything. So to read four is four more than I read any year. So I'm really happy about that. Um, and the mystery thrillers really loved it. I think I've discovered some that I really uh, enjoy reading and that are just gonna work for me so I branched out a lot this year and I didn't branch out in the typical ones like romance or classics um, and I'm really happy about that so I, I found a lot of books that I really loved that were not my typical reading genre so really happy about that in terms of format I love how I did a little pie chart so I actually transferred that into next year as well so as you can see 82 percent of what i read this year is audiobooks that's absolutely normal as i said my schedule is kind of hectic so whenever i am uh drawing working traveling doing chores at home i always listen to an audiobook so it's absolutely natural for me to go through so many audiobooks uh every year for physical books i ended up reading five which is good um, not a lot, but still, like, it, I am gonna try to read more physical books next year, but yeah. Uh, I really thought I'm gonna read a manga or a comic book or a graphic novel, didn't end up doing that, so that's kind of disappointing. Next year I'll put it more uh, as a priority. And for e-books, I bought an e-reader this year and I actually think this should be two now that I think about it, because I'm pretty sure I read two books. But anyway, one or two, it's just, it's too small a percentage. But still, really love the graph, and uh, yeah, that's that's my format <laughs> tracker. For my language, as you can see, 85% of the books I go through are in English. That's mostly because audiobooks are, that I have access to are in English. I do have access to some Bulgarian ones, but not the sci-fi and fantasy because in Bulgaria they translate mostly the romances and the like really popular stuff so I, I just I have no interest in those so it's natural that my English books are 85% and the bu books I read in Bulgarian are just 15%. Now on to the YA and adult it's uh, I was actually surprised. I usually read more YA or I thought I read more YA. This is the first year I think I'm tracking it properly. So probably because I read a lot of fantasy and sci-fi and the things that I have access to are usually YA. So I thought I was going to have a lot more, but I'm happy about this. I read a lot of adult books. Well, because I'm almost 30, so I think <laughs> I should be reading more adult books, but yeah. So. So yeah, in terms of rating, as you can see, actually, I don't know if you can see, I think you can see it. Uh, I gave uh, 15 books four star ratings. So these are the ones that I really enjoyed, but were not my favorite. So I, this is like my usual uh, rating, which is four stars, either three or four stars. As you can see for three stars, I have 11 books. So that's a lot. I only have two, one book for two stars and I have five books for five stars. These are the ones that are just really, really great, uh, that I really love. And I have a few that made it to my favorites list now because, uh, well, yeah, I gave them five stars. I did not end up DNFing a single book this year. And honestly, I'm happy about that because I read a lot of books that I wanted to read. The ones that I wasn't sure about ended up being very short, like a hundred pages or so. So it, it made no sense to DNF them. So I just finished them. So even though I wasn't enjoying them, I still didn't consider losing time finishing them. The only one that I probably should have DNF'd was The Lies of Locke Lamora. But 
the only reason I finished it was because I saw that it was over 700 pages. So it's gonna complete that prompt for this year, which is read a book that's over 700 pages. So that's the only reason I pushed through that one. And I'm glad I did because if I, if I hadn't, I wouldn't have completed that prompt. I didn't read any other book that was over 700 pages. That said, did not enjoy the book, should have DNF'd it. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's just my unpopular opinion at this point. Um, in terms of the last pages were my shelf of shame, which are, as I said, books that I started that, that I put down for some reason or another. As you can see, I managed to complete four of those, which I'm really happy about. Um, I am going to transfer the, the rest for next year and I'm gonna give them a shot because these are books that I didn't DNF. I just, I still want to finish them. I just... I don't know. I, I guess I lost a bit of interest, but I still want to finish them. So yeah, really happy that I read four. That's awesome for me. Um, not happy that I added three more books because <laughs> that's what I, added. I have them to here and then I ended three more during the year. So not happy about that, but I hope I can clear them out next year. For on the haul, I actually did end up unhauling a few books, but I didn't write it down. So I don't, I, I, I can't, I can't tell you really right, right now <laughs> what books I unhold. That's why it's empty. Um, but doesn't matter. It, it was, I think, two or three. So doesn't matter. Series started. I ended up finishing one series, which was kind of unexpected because at rare, Rape Error, I thought it had three books. I marked it out as three. It turns out it only had two. And um, yeah, so I ended up finishing the second one and finishing the series. So at least I finished one series. Now, as you can see, I have started a lot of series and I am not even close to finishing some of them. Um, I will be trying at least. I have a prompt to finish two series. Didn't end up doing that, but hopefully maybe next year. Um, but yeah, I had up until I think these shades of magic and then i started another five series this year so uh yeah i just start start series and i never finish them so i hope that this tracker will kind of motivate me to read more sequels and more series so i can uh read all of these but yeah these are my series tracker and this is a page where i wanted to do my year in book covers and print out a whole bunch of book covers and just make the whole page book covers but i don't have a printer and the work printer has been broken for a year now so didn't end up doing that maybe someday i don't know we'll see onwards to the monthlies i will not spend too much time in these because i actually went into them not having a plan and i ended up not actually writing much about the books it started off fine i had a really cool idea i really still love it that i have these um collages with pictures that remind me of the months so for january i have this winter theme um this is where i decided to write down the books that i started and the books i'm in the middle of oh i should write these these into the other tracker yeah i should remember to do that and then i have a sample of what i want to write as information about each book now in january i didn't finish any books so this page came about uh just because i didn't want to leave it empty so that's when i started to do it for every month afterwards my february was a space theme sci-fi theme that's why you have little baby yoda here and uh, again started in the middle of and i track how much i read how many pages from it i read so i can transfer it into the other trackers and then i end up uh, writing a few words and my opinions about uh, each book that I read. Now, I didn't end up having a lot of opinions or I didn't, I don't know, I couldn't write it down. I used to do that last year and it turned out really good because I ended up writing a lot about each and every book and I added pictures in it and it was great. I always had something to say, but this year I, I feel like I had nothing to say and it was kind of bothersome to write write it down in the journal so next year i don't think i'm gonna do that it, it just it requires way too much brain power and honestly i i'm not a good writer english is my second language so it, it, i'm not gonna do that i'm just gonna focus on trackers and visuals um but yeah my only book that i finished was mort in february in march i had like a crafty uh theme and i ended up 
I think finishing yeah three books um, as you can see they're very short um, just basically what the book is about and I that's not what I wanted to do uh, I write down a lot more about Sea of Rose because I really liked the book and it made me think a lot but not all of them did that to me uh, so I ended up not having much to say about some of them and that's why as I said I'm gonna scrap that idea but I'm going to go through quickly um, the different themes my April was kind of a purpley lavender theme I just found a few pictures that we liked and I went with the theme that is colors um, but yeah as you can see I spend time uh, some time writing it down and mostly I just uh, for the second quarter of the year I would just sit down and write a review of like seven books uh, one after the other and it, it just it was a mess so yeah not doing that next year I left space for me to fill in what I have to say but I think this is the first book the first sister where I really struggled to figure out what I want to say and what I will want to write about it just because I really enjoyed the book it's a very very hard sci-fi but it was so confusing and it's one of those books where the more you read the more confused you get so I just I had no idea what I wanted to write and now I, I no longer remember <laughs> what my thoughts were so yeah, I think this is the book where I started to really struggle, but um, I still tried in the next ones. May was again a color theme. It had like a urban yellow theme, which I like. Um, and yeah, somewhere here I started to not write down anything about the books. Like even How High We Dark, Go in the Dark, which is my favorite of the year. Look at how little I have for it. I just I can't write reviews man I just I, I shouldn't write reviews I can track and um, review them in terms of different aspects like characters plot or things I like things that I didn't like but having normal intelligent thoughts about books is I guess not something that my brain can accomplish um, these days June was a succulent plant theme which I really liked um, and then we go into the summer as you can see I think this is where yeah I start leaving blank spaces just so I can come back and write down something and it's been so long now that I just I have nothing to say <laughs> at this point so yeah uh, if you want to actually hear me talk about the books I have wrap-ups um, on my channel so yeah I'm still have to do all of my uh, end of the year wrap ups but hopefully we'll get to that and uh, you can hear my opinions about those books instead so as you can see October I just all together gave up and the journal is finished so that is my reading journal for 2022 now I'm going to get into my reading journal for 2023 so this is the journal that I picked now I love the visual of this journal i have had this for years and i have never used it mostly because it's lined paper and i usually go for dotted paper or no nothing at all but i just love the aesthetic of it and i thought it would be really cool to use it as a reading journal because it's got this newspaper theme and it's got all these writings um, as I said the paper is lined so it's not um, aesthetically pleasing but I still really wanted to use it so that's why I'm not showing you a um, creation of the journal I'm just gonna flip through and explain my process um, because it's not it doesn't end up looking as good maybe when it's filled out it will look better but yeah um, so this is my cover page which is reading journal 2023 um the <laughs> the pink theme was an afterthought i was just looking for stickers to decorate my pages with and i had these really cool japanese and pink flowers and sakura blossoms stickers and i went with it so that's why it's pink so that was my cover page this is going to be my index where i write down every book as i read them this is my 23 uh, prompts for the year 2023 um, if you want to pause it and look at the prompts if you can actually read my horrible handwriting um, yeah these are almost the same as last year's I think I scrapped one and added two others um, yeah hoping to complete more this year 
Um, for this page, I have the books that I read on two shelves and the books that I bought on the last shelf. I left some space just in case if, like last year, I end up reading a lot more, like 10 books more, so I can add them on this shelf. And I scrapped the idea for the bookish wish list. My 365 days of reading, I am still doing, doing that. I will see how exactly... Um, it's going, hopefully I fill it up to the end of this year, but I'm tracking, yeah, if I read a physical book, an audio book, a comic book, manga, or an ebook. On the next page, I decided to do best books of the year because like the top six was not enough. I had a few more to write down and I thought it would make it like a, a battle of the books. So on this page, um, I have monthly the two best books that I read. And I went with two because I don't usually read more than two. I usually read like between one and four, I think. So I think two best books for each month is plenty. Most of them will probably just have one if eight. So, roll to the best book for 2023. I'm going to start with January, February, and March will be fighting and two winners will come out. And from those two winners, I'll have one more winner that is going to fight fight it out against the winner from March, uh, from uh, April, May, and June. So, yeah, these months and quarters will fight it out and the best book will be the winner of the month. I think it'll be fun to fill this out. On the next page, I have my averages again. I have my average books per month, my average pages per month, my average rating and the highest rated on Goodreads, my rating, the lowest rated on Goodreads and my rating. So yeah, on this page, I have again books and pages. This is, um, hold on, I will show you because the pages is just kind of crappy and the colors from the other page bled through, but hopefully once I put in the uh, bars it won't be that visible but yeah this page is actually this one so this is the how many books and how many pages I read each month on the next page I did a pages goal and the idea here is depending on how many pages I read each month I will fill in the lines of this grid I haven't uh, separated the grid yet because I don't actually know how many pages in total I'm gonna read so I'm just going to mark it down as a pencil and then at the end of the year I will fill it in with the different colors so I can distribute them um, equally in this uh, rectangle but this is my color scheme I really like when they make a gradient so I think it would look really cool for my books goal because as I said that shelf thing sometimes when I read more I actually lose track of where the final book is. So this is my books to read goal and I just have 23 little books and I'm just gonna color it in for every book that I finish um, until I end up with 23. These are some books here I'm going to write down, uh, some books that I really wanna read this year. I probably won't get to them, I'm a very moody reader. So TBRs are not typically something I go for, I usually just book of the book and if I'm feeling it that's when I get it so probably won't write, write down too many here um, but we'll see <laughs> on the next page is all of my graphs as you can see I ended up using the exact same format from last year this is going to be the pie chart for all my formats this is the Bulgarian versus English the YA versus adult these this uh, table with bar uh, charts for the ratings and this is my genre uh, chart so and I, I added one another one that is going to be a pie chart for all of the genres so that I can see percentage wise uh, not only bar wise so I thought that would be cool on the next page I have again my shelf of shame and as you can see I ended up uh, adding some more um, books hopefully I end up reading at least one or two and these are the series that I have started um, and how many books they have how many I've read again hopefully I managed to finish at least one series this year I'm really really hoping and the next page is the last page before I start my monthlies which is a book review key so instead of writing thoughts that I have and feelings about each book 
I have decided to have like a page dedicated for the book or maybe two pages and this is all of the information I'm going to be tracking about every book so I have like the title the author is it part of a series what's the name what language it is um, pages or hours long the format I'm going to circle in whether it's physical audio ebook or comic book I'm going to check the box if it's if I own the book I have a genre or subgenre I have the dates that I started that I finished that it was published and I have the Goodreads rating versus my rating and I thought this would be cool to see how the Goodreads ratings compare to my own and then in terms of actual review I have decided to put like a tiny table of sorts where I will have bars uh, for each part that I uh, am reviewing for the book. So for the fantasy sci-fi uh, books, I have plot. For the non-fiction, for, I'm sorry, for the fiction and mystery thrillers, I have story. And for the non-fiction, I have... All right, guys, my camera cut off, so I don't know where I was when it cut off but yeah this is basically the reading journal as i said i'm not gonna be writing too much info about each book so this will probably last me next year as well so yeah this is this is what i have for my reading journal um i hope you enjoyed it i hope you have some ideas in terms of what to track and how to track it um and uh, yeah i hope you got inspired i hope you liked this video if you did please consider commenting liking and subscribing to my channel for more bullet journal content that said thank you guys so much for watching i will see you in the next one bye